July 22nd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Nehemiah chapters 3 and 4 from the Old Testament Then Eliashib the high priest and his priestly colleagues arose and built the sheep gate. They dedicated it and erected its doors, working as far as the Tower of the Hundred and the Tower of Hananel. The men of Jericho built adjacent to it, and Zachur, son of Imri, built adjacent to them. The sons of Hassanah rebuilt the fish gate. They laid its beams and positioned its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Miramoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakaz, worked on the section adjacent to them. Meshulam, son of Berechiah, the son of Meshezabel, worked on the section next to them. And Zadok, son of Baana, worked on the section adjacent to them. The men of Tekoa worked on the section adjacent to them, but their town leaders would not assist with the work of their master. Joiada, son of Pasea, and Meshulam, son of Besadea, worked on the Jeshana gate. They laid its beams and positioned its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Adjacent to them worked Melatiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Merenthite, who were men of Gibeon and Mizpah. These towns were under the jurisdiction of the governor of Trans-Euphrates. Aziel, son of Harhea, a member of the Goldsmiths Guild, worked on the section adjacent to him. Hananiah, a member of the Perfumers Guild, worked on the section adjacent to him. They plastered the city wall of Jerusalem as far as the broad wall. Rephaia, son of Hur, head of a half-district of Jerusalem, worked on the section adjacent to them. Judea, son of Harumaph, worked on the section adjacent to them, opposite his house. And Hattush, son of Hashabaniah, worked on the section adjacent to him. Malchijah, son of Haram, and Hasab, son of Pehath Moab, worked on another section in the Tower of the Fire Pots. Shalem, son of Halohesh, head of a half district of Jerusalem, worked on the section adjacent to him, assisted by his daughters. Hanan and the residents of Zenoa worked on the Valley Gate. They rebuilt it and positioned its doors, its bolts, and its bars in addition to working on 1,500 feet of the wall as far as the Dung Gate. Malchijah, son of Rechab, head of the district of beth Hakarem, worked on the Dung Gate. He rebuilt it and positioned its doors, its bolts, and its bars. Shalin, son of Kolholza, head of the district of Mizpah, worked on the Fountain Gate. He rebuilt it, put on its roof, and positioned its doors, its bolts, and its bars. In addition, he rebuilt the wall of the Pool of Siloam by the royal garden as far as the steps that go down from the city of David. Nehemiah, son of Azbek, head of a half-district of Bethzer, worked after him as far as the tombs of David and the artificial pool and the house of the warriors. After him, the Levites worked, Rehum, son of Bani, and after him, Hashabiah, head of half the district of Keilah, for his district. After him, their relatives worked. Binuai, son of Hanadad, head of a half a district of Keilah. Adjacent to him, Ezer, son of Jeshua, head of Mizpah, worked on another section. Opposite the ascent to the armory at the buttress. After him, Baruch, son of Zabai, worked on another section from the buttress to the door of the house of Eliashib, the high priest. After him, Merimoth, son of Uriah, the son of Hakaz, worked on another section from the door of Eliashib's house to the end of it. After him, the priest worked, men of the nearby district. After them, Benjamin and Hasab worked opposite their house. After them, Azariah, son of Maaseah, the son of Ananiah, worked near his house. After him, Binuai, son of Henadad worked on another section, from the house of Azariah to the buttress and the corner. After him, Palal, son of Uzziah, worked opposite the buttress and the tower that protrudes from the upper palace of the court of the guard. After him, Padiah, son of Parosh, 
and the temple servants who were living on Ophel worked up to the area opposite the water gate, toward the east, and the protruding tower. After them, the men of Tekoa worked on another section, from opposite the great protruding tower to the wall of Ophel. Above the horse gate, the priest worked, each in front of his house. After them, Zadok, son of Immer, worked opposite his house. And after him, Shemaiah, son of Shechaniah, guard at the east gate, worked. After him, Hananiah, son of Shelemiah, and Hanan, the sixth son of Zalaph, worked on another section. And after them, Meshulam, son of Barakiah, worked opposite his quarters. After him, Malchijah, one of the goldsmiths, worked as far as the house of the temple servants and the traders, opposite the inspection gate, and up to the room above the corner. And between the room above the corner and the sheep gate, the goldsmiths and traders worked. Now when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was quite upset. He derided the Jews, and in the presence of his colleagues in the army of Samaria, he said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they be left to themselves? Will they again offer sacrifice? Will they finish this in a day? Can they bring these burnt stones to life again from piles of dust? Then Tobiah the Ammonite, who was close by, said, If even a fox were to climb up on what they are building, it would break down their wall of stones. Hear, O our God, for we are despised. Return their reproach on their own head. Reduce them to plunder in a land of exile. Do not cover their iniquity and do not wipe out their sin from before them, for they have bitterly offended the builders. So we rebuilt the wall, and the entire wall was joined together up to half its height. The people were enthusiastic in their work. When Sanballat, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashdod heard that the restoration of the walls of Jerusalem had moved ahead, and that the breaches had begun to be closed, they were very angry. All of them conspired together to move with armed forces against Jerusalem and to create a disturbance in it. So we prayed to our God and stationed a guard to protect against them both day and night. Then those in Judah said, The strength of the laborers has failed. The debris is so great that we are unable to rebuild the wall. Our adversaries also boasted, before they are aware or anticipate anything, we will come in among them and kill them, and we will bring this work to a halt. So it happened that the Jews who were living near them came and warned us repeatedly about all the schemes they were plotting against us. So I stationed people at the lower places behind the wall in the exposed places. I stationed the people by families with their swords, spears, and bows. When I had made an inspection, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the great and awesome Lord, and fight on behalf of your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your families. It so happened that when our adversaries heard that we were aware of these matters, God frustrated their intentions. Then all of us returned to the wall, each to his own work. From that day forward, half of my men were doing the work, and half of them were taking up spears, shields, bows, and body armor. Now the officers were behind all the people of Judah, who were rebuilding the wall. Those who were carrying loads did so by keeping one hand on the work and the other on their weapon. The builders to a man had their swords strapped to their sides while they were building, but the trumpeter remained with me. I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, the work is demanding and extensive, and we are spread out on the wall, far removed from one another. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, gather there with us. Our God will fight for us. So we worked on with half-holding spears from dawn till dusk. At that time I instructed the people, Let every man and his co-worker spend the night in Jerusalem, and let them be guards for us by night and workers by day. We did not change clothes, not I, nor my relatives, nor my workers, nor the watchmen who were with me. Each had his weapon, even when getting a drink of water. God, what a great reminder for us to always be ready, to always be prepared, to always be ready to defend not only our relationship with you, but the Christian faith and what the Bible stands for. 
it seems to me that so often we're just going through our day in and day out as though the workers were working on the wall just doing whatever it took to work on the bolts and hanging hanging the doors and making sure everything was level and all of a sudden they had this fight on their hands where where people were threatening their lives their existence and I think we run into the same situations, although most of us don't run into somebody threatening our lives as much. But we run into those uh, situations where we're just going along, doing our own thing, and then all of a sudden somebody comes in our life and has a question about you, or has a question about the Bible, or has a question about our belief system. And we need to be ready to defend that, explain that, um, share that with grace to somebody else at any given time. You know, it talks about how they even uh, slept in their <laughs> in their clothes um, just to always be at the ready. And God, I just think this is just a really good reminder that we are every day supposed to be working on our relationship and spiritual muscles um, so that when we are put in those situations, and it's not always a fight, sometimes it's simply being able to articulate and answer questions, that we're ready to go, that that those daily exercises involve reading your word, praying to you, communicating in that relationship with you, and then going out and loving other people so that when those situations come, we're prepared. We're prepared to reflect your glory and your love, God. Thank you, God, for your strength and the armor you give us to put on every single day to go out and be prepared. In your son's name I pray. Amen.